When I came back to Ramana Ashram, some people for whom I had a lot of respect often spoke ill of Kavyakantha Ganapati Muni. They claimed that his accounts were figments of his imagination, and I was influenced by their views. And one day I approached Munagala Venkataramaya, a great scholar and one of the recorders of the talks with Ramana. Munagala had not seen Kavikanta and was therefore neutral about him, saying, Why do people pull down Kavikanta so much? I inquired, listing all the transgressions he was rumored to have made. And then he said, Ganesan, stop. How did you know all this? I revealed the names of the people who told me this, and he said, They have given an opinion, and you have received it. Are you sure it is the truth? I was puzzled. How can we know which opinion is correct? I asked him. And Munagala then said, Ganesan, don't you know the secret? Whatever Bhagavan says is correct. Whatever everyone else says is an opinion. I was still not satisfied. I had read an argument that Kavikanta was not a self-realized soul because he had so many sankalpas. His detractors often quoted this, and I was convinced by this logic. I put forth my argument to Munagala, and he said, I asked Bhagavan the same thing. How come it is written in such and such a book that Kavyakanta was not self-realized. And Bhagavan told me, that is not what I said, but what the recorder must have expected me to say. And then Munagala advised me, go by whatever Bhagavan has said, and you will be near the truth. Do not go by opinions, particularly if they divide people whether about saints or anyone else. Do not pay heed to them. Seekers should never be carried away by negative statements made about any saint. In order to progress, this is the first rule to remember. What detractors say are just opinions, and if we believe them, we fall victim to the mind. It is true that Kavikanta had very high ideals. However, they were not sankalpas, but sacha sankalpas. A sankalpa is a concentrated desire of wanting to achieve something. A sacha sankalpa is that particular form of sankalpa which comes not that you have a desire for it, in 1908, Kavikanta had asked Bhagavan, is seeking the source of the I thought sufficient for the attainment of all my aims? Or is mass incantation, that is, mantra japa, needed? Bhagavan replied, seeking the source of the I thought will suffice. Though this was the initial advice Bhagavan gave him, Kavyakanta pressed on with his argument, What about my aims and ideals? And Bhagavan said, It will be better if you throw the entire burden on the Lord. He will carry them, and you will be free. He will do his part. So Munagala told me, people quote only these sentences, but Bhagavan told me what happened afterwards. At first, Kavyakanta could not grasp the inner meaning of Bhagavan's counsel. After a few years, he came to Bhagavan and said, Bhagavan, I am surrendering all my sankalpas at your holy feet. 
There was no greater God than Bhagavan for him. Kavyakanta Ganapati Muni and his disciples plied Bhagavan with questions. Though the answers were not immediately noted down, Nayana or Ganapati Muni had such a clear memory that he later condensed Bhagavan's answers into verses and recited them, saying, This is from the third chapter of the Ramana Gita, or this is the eighth verse from the second chapter in the Ramana Gita. He had not yet written Ramana Gita, and people used to wonder at his claims. Finally, one day, he sat down and wrote the entire Ramana Gita of 300 verses. He wrote the questions with their answers and showed them to Bhagavan, who verified each one of them and remarked, Perfectly correct. In Ramana Gita, one of Bhagavan's answers about women is most revealing. Ganapati Muni questions Bhagavan, Are not women equal to men? And Bhagavan answers, What is woman or man? It is based on the body. For the soul, there is no difference. Then Kavyakanta asks, is it possible for women to master the scriptures? And Bhagavan said, without a doubt. But then can women get self-realization? Do they also become yanis? Without a doubt, the guru said. For the soul which has to achieve realization, there is no difference. In 1922, when Bhagavan's mother attained Maha Samadhi, it was not Bhagavan who wanted to entomb her, glorify her, or build a temple for her. It was Kavyakanta who told Bhagavan, According to the scriptures, Bhagavan, and your words in the Ramana Gita, she is a realized soul. She should be entombed with all sanctity. And so Ganapati Muni administered this task, and it was over her samadhi that the Matrubhushwara temple was constructed. Ganapati Muni even assigned the temple its name, the Matrubhushwara, meaning the Lord who has become the mother. Thus, the idea of the temple, the nucleus around Ramana Ashramam was built, came from Kavyakanta Ganapati Muni.